Say you actually have a friend and you want to play some old school games. Well, I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games. And today I count down the top 10 best multiplayer games for the original Nintendo. Also, stick around because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a lesser known glitch in Super Mario Bros. 3 that maybe you'll find just a little bit interesting. So, let's start the list now. Second Opinion Games Number 10, Super Mario Bros. 3. Gorgeous and iconic and one of the best games of its entire generation, and it's a no-brainer. But most people really don't consider this to be a good multiplayer experience. You know why? Because you can't play at the exact same time. But if you really sit down and start playing co-op, you could find yourself working your way through levels. Say you can't pass a level, but your best friend can. Or you open up a mushroom house and you don't want them to get it. Well, then tap your button as fast as possible and you'll enter a battle mode, giving you the right to enter that mushroom house after all. And the battle modes are where the game really shines for multiplayer because nearly every single level can be a beat him up slugfest to see who has the right to take on Bowser at the end of the game. This little simple addition makes the game so much more fun and a great multiplayer experience. Number 9, Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road. But most people just call it Super Off-Road. 1 to 4 player in this overhead driving game. The controls might feel a little bit slippery at first, but over time you will earn more cash, which allows you to invest in power-ups or engine, top speed, acceleration, all the things you need to win and dominate this game. As you progress through, make sure you're picking up plenty of NOS because that gives you an excellent speed boost and the cash that is scattered all around the levels. Now, what makes this game perfect for a multiplayer event is the fact that you could team up to take down the number one person or you know what? It's up to you. How you play is entirely up to you. As long as you stay in first place, you're probably going to stay that way, though, because more cash equals more power-ups, and more power-ups equals more winning. So the balance really isn't entirely there, but it doesn't stop the game from being an absolute blast to play. Number 8, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. If you want a good head-to-head -head fighting game on your original Nintendo, then this is pretty much your only choice. There are four different stages to play on, and of course, all four turtles are here, but it seems like they left their weapons at home. However, they do have their own special moves. Also, Casey Jones is thrown into the mix, as well as Hothead and Shredder, who is super overpowered. Get an opponent's health down to about halfway, and a little thing will scroll across the drop, dropping a Super Ball. Pick up this Super Ball, and you can throw it for massive damage against an enemy. Also, there's a run by doing a quick double tap of the forward button, and jump kicks galore. This is an incredible fighting game that controls Silky Smooth, something I really didn't expect from my Nintendo. Number 7, SCAT, Special Cybernetic Attack Team. The fact that the word team is in here means it should always be played two-player. Brought to us by Natsume, this isn't your typical side-scrolling shooter. No, it can move in all different types of directions, whether it be up or down, sometimes up way too fast for way too long, and your pea shooter can be powered up to take down difficult foes. But where the game really shines is your options that you have a limited control over so you can determine whether or not it shoots in front of you for the ultimate attack power or behind you or up and 
down because enemies come at you from all angles, which is why constant communication with your friend is perfect. A perfect attack team. Number 6, Jackal. Did you know Jeeps are the number one weapon of war? It's probably because of that machine gun that always fires forward and the fact that you can throw grenades in any direction. Later on, that gets powered up to missiles that can launch a little bit farther. Why do you want to play this game two player? It's because you could do the old bait and switch. Why a turret's firing at you, your friend can pick them off from behind. And don't be afraid to run over as many of the little men enemies as you possibly can. And pick up some of the hostages that are inside some huts and drop them off at a helicopter for some extra points and possibly even an extra life. It is really nice to work as a team to bring our boys home. Number 5. Life Force you enter a very organic world where all the enemies feel like they're living and breathing and just trying to eviscerate you at all costs. That's right, this game gets a Silver Surfer Award for being one of the most balls-out difficult games I could even imagine. And that's why it is mandatory that you play this one two-player. Because learning all the little ins and outs of the game by yourself is just too big of a task. You might as well go through that torturous heck with a friend by your side, and it's really the only way I prefer playing this game. Especially because if you're playing with someone a lot better than you, you could always steal all their lives and eventually kill the boss and say that you did it all yourself. Good job. Number 4, Bomberman 2. Let's throw co-op out the window because this one's all about the freaking death match. Now, just like any bomber, you're gonna probably blow yourself up just as much as your opponent. So the game really emphasizes you to be patient and think about your bomb placement. Eventually, you'll get bigger explosions and more bombs to set all over the map. Now, don't be afraid to go after your opponent hard when things start to clear up and try not to set a trap for yourself, which happens a little too often. The game could even end in a draw, which leaves both of you throwing the controllers down in frustration. This is so much fun, and it really paved the way for modern deathmatch in video games today. Even if it was just... Look at this. It, it looks really, really simple. Also, the game's like a fortune. It's like 200 freaking dollars. So, there you go. Number three, Dr. Mario. Do you like taking drugs as much as I do? Well, you know what? It's even more fun when you bring a friend along for the trip. Now, I have a lot of respect for doctors because after playing this game, I know one little tiny mistake can completely screw you over. So you have to be very precise, which is why when you chain a combo and send a couple pieces over to your friend's screen, well, they are gonna hate you so freaking much. Also, you really have to use your brain on this because things are going to be way too fast sometimes and extremely intense. You can always dial down the difficulty if you want or turn it all the way up to the freaking max. The music is great and taking on a friend head to head in a pill popping tournament. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a pretty trippy thing, man. Number 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. That's right, those turtles are back on this list, this time with the best beat-em-up on the console. Now, you could play with friendly fire on or off, depending on how much you hate playing with your friend. And keep in mind, those foot soldiers always travel in groups of threes. If you were a fan of the cartoon, well, then you're going to quickly recognize all the enemies that you have to fight in this game, including Bebop and Rocksteady, which has 
has never looked better. This feels like an arcade game at home on our Nintendo. The game this time around has an original story and even a monster truck, as well as a submarine in the docks, and sometimes you even get hurt when you fall into the sewers. I thought that was kind of the turtle's thing. Don't be afraid to eat a slice of pizza and regain your health, and this game just makes you want to say one thing. Cowabunga, dude! Before we get to number one, time for some honorable mentions, like Desert Command, which is a strategy game similar to Advance Wars, but a bit slower and more simplistic. Cabal is nearly unplayable single player, but when you bring a friend, it is a great time. Nightmare on Elm Street has you and three of your friends bringing down Freddy Krueger in this epic co-op battle, and Legendary Wings, where you can play as a cybernetic angel, bringing down dragons and the devil himself, and don't be afraid to steal that power up and tell your friend that he could have the next one, only for you to steal it again! Okay, now that that's out of the way... Number one, Contra. Bring a friend along and put in that Konami code for the 30 lives because this game could have you feel like Rambo one second and dead meat them next. Tons of iconic weapons such as the laser or the spread shot, even a little bit of a fire which does a swirly thing. You're not always running from left to right, sometimes you're running into the background. The bosses are huge, especially this heart, shooting face huggers everywhere. Taking down the evil red falcon is always satisfying. Using teamwork, especially on that waterfall stage so you don't get punched in the face and have a bloody nose, well, that's pretty important as well. The music is some of the best of the entire generation. This game is actually better in the home version than it is in the arcades, and that's why it is my number one pick for best multiplayer game on the console. And of course, it's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Okay, time for that Super Mario Bros. 3 tip. Equip a P-Wing and go into Bowser's Castle. At this certain spot, I want you to crouch, fly up, and then stand up. Up. Then when you go in to fight Bowser, the screen will be changed a little bit. Notice how there is missing a whole layer of blocks along the bottom. But if you want to switch things up a little bit more, fly up when you enter this room and go to the left. Then land briefly and then fly back up and go to the right. At this point in time, Bowser's fireballs will disappear. Also, you can just stay crouched and Bowser will continue to ground pound himself to death because when they are coding the game, they screwed up Bowser's hitbox and completely broke this last boss of the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this list and this tip and make sure you're leaving me a comment of all the games you really love and until later I'll see you again guys.